Welcome back to my NHL 19 franchise mode with the Toronto Maple Leafs. John Tavares is the current star man, but Austin Matthews definitely has the potential to overtake him. And I was thinking that the series was going to be more, whose team is this going to be long term? I'm not sure who's going to be able to take this team. Now I'm a little bit thinking, is Eric Carlson going to drop to free agency? And can we snag the bugger up? Um, he's apparently not going to adopt a free agency. Has he resigned? Have I gone mad? Was he never going to drop to free agency even in real life? What's going on there? Let's have a look. I was almost sure that he was going to free agency at the end of the year. He's got an extension. I mean, the teams actually signed their players to extensions. That's good. And what's his contract? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Seven years? Is it? It might be eight. Is there a way to check? Uh, doesn't say. I'm guessing it's an eight-year extension. Not a bad deal for them at all. So that's not an option. How about LA Kings? Let's talk to them about something quick. Drew Doughty has also signed an extension. A bigger extension. Carlson is two overall points worse than Doughty. I'm really not sure how I feel about that, actually. That's, that's yeah. Hmm. All right. Okay then. Well, those two aren't options, but pending free agents did see some good names. Patrick Liney hasn't signed his extension yet. Nylander will be on that list somewhere, I'd imagine. Great point. Uh, these will be... I've got to check. RFAs. But having said that, UFA Tyler Sagan. Maybe Artemi Panarin. Panarin, Tavares, and... Uh, and Matthews will be a brutal first line. And we can probably afford to do some of these. So that's it. there's some interesting options for us there at the end of the year. There'll be some interesting options for trades, I'd imagine, as well. We've got loads of cap space. At some point, we need to re-sign Nylander. If we're a good team this year, we might trade for a defenseman for the playoffs to try and make sure we're as competitive as possible. I'm excited by the prospect of maybe, possibly making the playoffs. I haven't done that in a while. I think I made the playoffs once in my last series. It was a real challenging thing. I'm quite happy I did it. But, uh, well, Marlowe's been injured, so that will throw Ennis in. That's fine. Ennis in, the, and we win our first game 3 nothing. Locker room interactions are going to be really annoying here because I have no say over what happens with them, I don't think. 4-1 and one to start the season, though. That's nice. I'm okay with it. 4-1-1 one and one still. I mean, the Capitals were a good team as well. Not a horrible start. That is a problem, though. Injuries are on 25%. So I don't know if this is going to be an issue here, but that's a problem. Um, and I guess we call up McElhaney because he's the best backup. Backup. But we will have to send him through waivers. He should be fine. But he also might not be fine. So let's go to edit lines. By the way, if, just a reminder, if you haven't seen the first episode, I've got the, uh, what do you call it, on the morale system on. But I have not got uh, player meetings on. Because I just don't need them in my life. They're annoying. And they're repetitive. And as far as I'm aware, they haven't really improved that that much. So I'm just not interested. Central Scouting has done their first rankings of the season. Do we know anything about... We know that... We already know 100% certainty that Quincy Galvan... Galvin... Dunno is... Medium elite. First overall prediction. My scout thinks he should go first overall. Um, I don't know how big 79 kilograms and 180 centimeters is because i don't know that measurement system i don't even know which measurement system that is so i'm a little confused by that he's doing very well so far in the usa east but it is a weak competition 10 goals in 11 games though is mental and he's an animal because shooting is a plus puck skills a plus skating a plus worse is physical and that's a minus Apparently every player has bad reach. Yeah. It's going to be like Bobby Hull. Okay, well, obviously whoever picks him up is going to be a lucky, lucky team. I don't suspect that will be us. I think we'll be... I mean, I oh, we could be looking real low down here. But I'd be... 
okay with taking basically on this this sort of team where we're basic we're a good team up front. I'm fine with taking, you know, picking up players that aren't going to be in the team immediately, but players that will hopefully get to be real good contributors for us. Obviously, if you can get two players who have the, who have equal, who's um, who's actually available for us, uh, Anderson and Marlow are both available to us. That's good. So yeah, I'd obviously rather have someone who is immediately going to be good and also is going to get incredible. But that's not necessarily that realistic. So I think I'd rather, knowing that, having said that, would we rather just pick up players that are going to be a really good ball up pretty decent straight away? Nicholas Charmerson for two firsts and a third. I'm going to go ahead and decline that because that seems well over the top for a, for a rental 84 overall defenseman. Unless that's what the value is on this game. And then that's a bit scary to me, to be honest. Kapanen for... Uh, what? Capital for a second. No, I'm all good. Thanks, bud. Uh, we've lost a couple of games in a row here. Three in a row, in fact. And 6-4-1 and one already. Oh, 6-4-2. It's starting to look not great. Spiza, who was available to me as a free agent and I didn't sign. And a second for a first and a fourth. No, just absolutely not. That ended up being not a great month for us, actually. It wasn't terrible. We're above 500, and Mitch Marner is killing the game. 15 points. Good googly moogly. That's pretty impressive. Okay. 15, 14, 12. That first line is on it. I'm totally fine with that first line, and I don't really want to change much. But Tavares has only scored four goals as the sniper on that line. Is that because he's playing out on the left side? Or Mark Matthews doesn't shoot the puck that much either. He's a real playmaker. Interesting. Okay. I'm not going to worry because they're all up at or above a point per game. And so I suspect that line's probably fine. But something to keep an eye on. Maybe that these guys aren't really scoring that many goals. I mean, actually, having said that, was Tavares on for like maybe 20, 30, 30 goals maybe? Mana at the moment is on for 40 something goals and Matthews is on for mid 30s goals, which would be good if they all three got those. I'd rather have someone like Tavares pick up 50 or something mad, but we'll see what happens there. I think I'm going to leave it anyway. Uh, Nylander is on a minus one with eight points, but that's not horrible at all. Kadri also eight points. Who's on their line with them? It's Marlow, but he got injured, right? Uh,. Uh, he's actually done quite well. Three points in four games. That's fine as well. I think we are just going to go forward another month before we worry about anything. I mean, the scouting. I'm not going to worry about that for a little while uh, until we get closer to the deadline. We will take a look maybe at the amateur scouting when the next update pops up. We break that losing streak as well, which is nice. And then immediately fall, at, fall back into a fresh one. Hopefully that ends at one though. Vegas are terrible. They were three and thirteen after they lost to us. And Boston are basically the exact opposite. They're beasts. We are not a great team here. And that scares me. Uh Garrett Sparks. It's gonna be really confusing to me that he's actually on the Marlies, but I'm gonna just go assistant coach replace player. Kadri has been injured. Uh, if I replace him, it's going to put Ennis on the centre. December 18th. How long? How far away is that? Quite far. So I'm actually going to go into the lines and change them. Uh, Dahlbeck. I don't know anything about you, sir. Uh, how old are you? 27? Absolutely not. Decline him. And that is too long for Kadri to be out. We actually did win a couple of games there, though. Uh, I still think probably Ennis on that line is not the best idea. Mana has already dropped down. So in the last seven games, he got two points. So, he, uh, I mean, it was never going to maintain that point of production, probably. Although, having said that, why on earth not? Considering the line he's on. We're not in a playoff position right now, but it's pretty close and we're pretty early on in the year. Uh, yeah, Kadri needs to be replaced. I don't think it's going to be with Ennis. I think... Probably, ugh. yeah, this is a, again a weird situation because I'll get time and say face off 70. Ugh. Ugh. 
Let's go with Hyman as the center. And Ennis is the third line center. Who has terrible face-offs. Browns are 70. Let's do that for now. And then let's quickly check how the guys are all doing. Tavares is on. Come on, where's this point production? Have I just gone straight past it? Yes, I have. This is a different screen. 15 points in 19. Okay. 14 and 19 for Matthews. Okay. 17 and 19 for Marner. Okay. 6 in 11 for Marlowe. Okay. 10 in 19 for Hyman is actually not bad. He was on the third line. It's actually pretty good. Uh, 13 and 19 for Nylando is okay. I'm already starting to think about maybe switching one of these guys off the top line. What about the third line? 7 and 19, not great. 8 and 19, ew. 5 and 9, not bad. But he was on the second line. 3 and 19, but this is the fourth line. Four goals for Kapanen, but... And then as a low top 6, I should... I don't want to ruin him, but I'm kind of trusting EA when they said, yeah, we're making the, the player development less random. I'm really hoping that's true and that these are going to be increasing if I give them good ice time. Minus one for Riley, despite having 11 points in 19 games. Five assists for Zaitsev, 23 penalty minutes, though, and a plus one. Connor Carrick has done pretty good. Okay, and then nine points for Gardner. Plus four, yeah, I mean, um, uh, no, that was weird. Yeah, I don't know what to do with these lines here. I think I'm going to leave it as it is for now and hope that these two bounce back, but I'm tempted to go, the problem is, I don't want to go like two righties on this second line and two lefties on the first line. It just feels a bit weird. What's Anderson doing? 0.936. No complaints with him at all. Calvin Picard. I have some complaints, but he's the backup, so it's been limited uh, numbers of games. Let's just go forward another month and see where we stand. And we didn't even finish that month, so let's finish this month first and then see where we stand. Hopefully we get a few wins here. Bounce back to some good form. Uh, we immediately lose, of course. But of course we immediately lose. Shrew, yep. Macadam, don't know who you are, bud. Sparksy's going back in. Old Sparksy, mate. Old Sparksy's going back in. So I've got to give them all nicknames. We lose again. This is a bit crap, actually. Second for a third, Lovejoy and a fourth. I mean, part of me is just there thinking, how good is Lovejoy? Not that good. 79 overall wouldn't get in our in our team really. Uh, but having said that, the amount for him is basically pennies. Downgrading our second to a third and then picking up an extra fourth. I mean, it's literally so little. Downgrading our second to a third, picking up a fourth to make up the difference. And then getting Ben Lovejoy. I, I don't really want him. I'm not going to do that trade right now because I don't want to take up a roster spot for someone that we could get at the deadline. So I will not bother. But there you go. A couple of wins in a row there. Let's hope that we can get another one. We're getting a lot of offers now. Second and a third for Johnson. Uh, is it Johnson or Johnson? Because it's double S. That's making me think he's Scandinavian and therefore, and it's Andreas, right? I'm going to guess it's Johnson. Johnson. Uh, I don't want to give him up really. Two fourths. No, I'm not going to do that. That doesn't make any sense to me right now. We still don't know if he's going to be good. Uh, Hickey, Emelin, the Kapanen a second. I'm going to guess that they're both kind of past it at this stage. Let's have a look. Hickey's not who I thought he was. Uh, I'm a bit com Yeah, I've forgotten who that is. Hickey actually could be worth picking up. What's his contract? 4.2.5. It's not horrible. Alexi Emelin, I'm not interested in picking up. And his contract's fine, but I'm just not interested in him. Hickey. I'm not giving up Kapanen on a second. But what would we have to give up? Probably actually more than I would think. Maybe. 
Lilligren's up to a 77. He's already close to breaking into this team. Uh, how's he doing in the AHL? He is doing... There's no way of telling here, is there? Yes, there is. Oh, the screen is... It's throwing me well off. This is a depth defenseman now. And he's got 5 points in 18, which is not that good. Uh, he's fine. He, he will get much better, I think. With that medium elite potential. Good pickup for them. What whereabouts in the draft was that? 17th. Yeah, he was touted as one of those guys that could go real early. I don't know why I'm talking about him. Because he's not getting traded. Who would I have to give up for him then? Uh, be maybe looking at... A Rassanen. I wouldn't mind giving up a Rassanen for him. Nah, it's not even close. It's, it's just, I want to make sure that I'm getting the guy I want. Even though it's someone that I would consider, I would rather go out and find our guy at the deadline. Uh, Adam Henrik, Susta for a first, Kaepernick and a second. It's just quite a lot. It's just quite a lot. Just because we're a good team now doesn't mean I want to give up all of my prospects and all of my picks. And, I mean, we're in a playoff spot now, but it's, it's close. We're only a, kind of a point in right now from Tampa and Pittsburgh. Not two teams I thought would be dropping out of the playoff race. Tampa and Pittsburgh and Buffalo are in. New York Islanders are in. What? Not that, I mean, the Islanders realistically, I don't think are going to be in. I noticed that the Rangers are well down there. That doesn't surprise me. I'm a Rangers fan, so I'm okay with insulting the Rangers. Uh, Anders Lee is killing the game, apparently. Joshua Hosang. Yes, he's doing pretty good. I, yeah. Jordan Eberle. Okay. Fine. No one's doing amazing. Basel. 85 overall. He's a very good player, but he's only the same overall as like a a Nylander. He's, he's very good though, actually. I haven't said that. Offensively, those attributes are beaut. Offensively, he's not great. Apparently that's four and a half stars. I don't understand these systems. Yeah, two seventy sevens, yet it's half a star less than his shooting. Which is and it's the same star as his senses. Whereas eighty, ninety, eighty five. Makes no sense to me. But okay. That's gonna irritate me actually, I'm gonna be honest with you. Just just weirdly defined boundaries. Uh, 80 overall, uh, yep, okay, who's the goalie then? Robin Lehner is doing real good, and so is Thomas Grice as the backup. Okay, uh, has Robin Lehner been moved? I, I mean, let's have a look at the lines real quick again, and just work out if we need to move anything around. Tavares, just keep changing from that screen, 21, I mean, it's not horrible. 20 for Matthews is not horrible. And 20 for Mana isn't isn't hideous either. But is it good enough? We should be getting more out of that first line, I think. 9 in 18 for Marlow. 16 in 26 for Hyman. It's not doing too bad. And then 19 in 26 for Nylander. I'm starting to think that we would be better off changing these lines up here. And in fact... I think I'm going to do that. Who are we missing right now? It's Kadri, isn't it? So would I be better off going almost 1A, 1B, 2, 4, if that makes sense? And going Matthews on the second line, Tavares in the center, with... I'm going to try some of different lines out, I think, yeah. How about Marlowe, Matthews, and Nylander? Two playmakers and a sniper with, at the moment, Hyman, Tavares, and Mana, Playmaker, Sniper, two-way, and then Sniper, two-way, Playmaker, uh, Sniper, okay, he's a Sniper as well. Why do I think he was a Playmaker? Um, who's the current scratch? We haven't got one, right? Because Kadri's out. So Kadri is going to come back in. He might play our third line center. And just make sure we give him some good time elsewhere. Maybe on the PK and the power play. Him in here. 
with Brown on the right hand side, and then you've got two way sniper playmaker here as well. And you've got two very strong lines, one pretty decent line, and one moderately weak line. How good is Kapanen done? Five goals, no assists. 13 points in 16 games. Ennis has done a pretty good job. Really difficult to complain at Ennis. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm going to do that. Because they're doing well, that top line. But they're not destroying it in a way that I would never want to separate them. If you know what I mean? Like, for them to be completely... To justify me putting our three best forwards on one line when two of them are centres, they would really have to be crushing it. Uh, Riley's playing 26 minutes a night and he's a minus 6 but um, yeah okay Zaitsev also not doing amazing I think we're going to go Gardner and Riley and then Zaitsev and Carrick seems to make a bit of sense even though it is righty and righty lefty lefty Anderson's come back down to earth which might explain why we've dropped off a little bit but the team should be good enough, and I, yeah. I'm also a little bit concerned about the, uh, the scouting, because I, I haven't seen a scout report thing yet. But I may try and fix the scouting up a little bit, make sure that we're covering the right areas of the draft. Uh, Cracknell's been injured. Uh, that's fine, he's on the AHL squad. Not worried about him at all. He was on the first line of the AHL squad, but... There you go. Okay, draft class. Let's have a look at what we know about this draft class so far. We know the top three are quite good. Central Scouting now has Tervinen as a probably a two-way forward. Galvan is a sniper. What do we know about Tervinen? We know that he's pretty damn good, but he's not got great shot utilization, teammate utilization or reach. But he's a very he's likely a playmaker or maybe a two-way forward with a good two hundred foot game. Similar to Nick Backstrom, likely a yeah, likely a playmaker. Some concerns if you can handle a professional environment. And morale is on, so maybe you'd start seeing some issues there. Peyton Krebs is now listed as third overall. And he's doing okay. Twenty nine and twenty six. I mean it's good, but Galvan's doing pretty good. And Tavinen's playing in the Liga in uh, Finland, so he's doing all right. We don't know a lot about many of these guys, though, which is a little bit concerning. I think I'll leave them a little bit longer to their own devices, but then we need to figure out what we need. And I guess what we need is probably defensemen, but I'm not 100% set on that. I think realistically what we pick is the best player. I mean, we could use anything, really. Anyone who's top-notch, we can put into this team. For example, DeAndre Scrivens, who's listed as not a steal, but is doing pretty good. He's only played four games, and he's really not very good. But he could get quite good. I think he could get to be elite, basically. What that likely means is he's going to be absolutely terrible out of the draft. But I don't really care because we've got Anderson for a few years here. I'm not worried about picking up the best possible goalie. As we want to avoid are Mikhail Shestapolov, Shestopolov and Lev Starikov from the Windsor Spitfires. Okay, love that Spitfires logo. That's a beaut. Um, yeah, okay. I will make sure that I do a little bit more of the scouting the next time it pops up. Uh, we lose the game. I was about to say we're on a little bit of a win streak there, but we do lose it. Cracknell's fully healed. Uh, okay. Don't really mind, but he can go in instead of Zach O'Brien. I wish you could set up on this game a setting that says, this is my best 12, my best 6, and my best goalie. Whenever possible, use them. Hainsey has been injured with a mild concussion back December. Which means Kadri is back also. Which means... I'm a bit confused. Hang on. So Ennis has been, has been doing pretty good, right? 16 and 22. Very good, actually. Very impressive. 
So I'm going to remove one of these guys. I think Josh Lievo is the guy who goes. And Nassim, Nazim, Nazim uh, 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 Kadri, can't say his name today, comes back in. And then I think I'm actually going to go with Johnson, Johnson on this line. And then Brown on the left, Kadri in the centre, Ennis on that side. I was going to keep Johnson, Johnson there. But Ennis is doing pretty good, and he's a sniper, playmaker, two-way forward. That works fine for me. Uh, that was my original plan was to leave John Johnson here and get rid of Ennis. But I just think... Uh, well, I mean, Saints there as well. Is that still the best option for centre? No, Juris should be playing the centre on that one. Not happening. Don't know why he was on there at all. That makes sense to me, I think. I'm going to leave it with those guys. We're on a two-game losing streak. No, we're not. We won one. But then we immediately lose on. We're a very shaky team here. But 18, 12, and 3. Mm, I think... Well, I mean, are we going to be a playoff team? Likely, right? It makes sense that we would be. Seidenberg, we don't know if he's still an 81. An 81? I'm now confused because it wasn't an 81 before. He was a 79. And I thought that was confirmed. I'm going to leave him in for a few games then. And see what it says about him. Travis Hamannick and James Neal. Now that is interesting. Calgary Flames are looking to make a big deal here. Travis Hamannick is only an 83. Is that an undervaluing? Possibly. He'd be on our second pairing, though. He is a plus two right now. Defensively, he's four star. Are you mental? What is this? I don't understand this system. Is that because his face-offs are low? He's a defenseman. It doesn't matter. This system is mental. Am I going mad? How is Mana four and a half star defensively? The issue with that is best lines will be ruined because it won't put him on the penalty kill because he's got four-star defense. That's nuts. That's so weird, man. He's basically very good defensively and pretty good physically and not a lot else. Is that worth 3.86 million a year? I think he is worth that, but it's is he worth a first? And am I willing to give James Neal that five-year deal? I don't think I'm willing to give James Neal that deal. Uh, he's not getting the real deal, James Neal deal from me. Kyle, dumbass. I don't know. He's a good player, to be fair. He is good. He's just 31. And I don't want to pay him till he's 35, 36 for that much money. I wouldn't be willing to do that. I might consider this, you know. First round pick is too much. It's too much. It has to be too much, right? Who else have we got? What's Lydia going up to? 77, okay. Um, it just has to be too much. It has to. Defensively, we'd be moving out. Not Gardner. Maybe Carrick. Medium top six. I'm not worried about that. Or Hainsey even. Hainsey's got a bit of value. Move Hainsey for him. They do want him. Why do they want to get rid of Hamannick then? Is that a definite 100% elite potential is madness? Because they've given him elite potential and then no ability to grow. Um, so hang on. If I throw in Hainsey here, I don't, it's really difficult to tell how far away I am here. Goalies. They want McElhaney for some reason. They can have him. I'll just use Sparks as my backup. McElhaney's been sat there anyway. Um, and then I guess... Skaters matching the block with the only one defenseman. We can have Derzilo top six. Goalies, yeah, we've already checked that. Draft picks, like third and a fourth. Uh. Feel like that's pretty good. If I can get this to work with a with a goalie taken over, I'd have to take. What do we got here? Schneider. Have no idea on his trade value. I'm I'm not interested in that one really. 
we know that uh, Rittick is really low, but having said that, he's worse. So let's take McDonald. If that goes through, a third, a fourth, a low top six prospect, my third string goalie, and Ron Hainsey for Hamannick, I will 100% do that. Trade reject rejected, not even close. Hmm. Yeah, I know we're not there. Maybe I might agree with that. Not even close. I'm not convinced. I think they're bluffing. Would they take a second? Just a second. No third or fourth. Probably not, right? That's a little way off still. Is McElhaney worth this value difference? That's not really there, is it? Uh, sweeten the deal. How much, though? They've, they've got different responses here, which I'm a fan of. How about seven? I think this could be worth it. Um... Something better. Fifth. I'd still do that deal. I like this. How many, I know I said I wanted to go out and get my guy if I wanted to get someone, but how many not bad? And the contract's not horrible. Sweeten the pot a bit. So it's looking like a, probably a fourth would get that done. Do I want to use our fourth or their or St. Louis's fourth? How good is St. Louis? I'm not sure, but I think that would get it done. A second and a fourth and swapping Hainsey for Hamannick. A second round pick. How about if we take back a real low pick as well? Or well, how about we swap a fourth for a fifth? Ah, this is really... I think I'm going to go for this with a seventh if they do it. I, I don't think that's a horrible deal for us at all. Ah, okay, that. Dang it. I thought that would go through for sure. I'll add, I'll add a seventh. I don't know how much more I'm willing to give here. Oh, oh. We haven't got a sixth. If we got a sixth next year that they'd be willing to take, they would. How about that? How about a sixth next year, but we make it a second next year as well? Is that what we want to do? No. How about that? Come on, come on, do it for us. Accepted. Yeah, that was um, that was a difficult negotiation, but I think that makes sense for us. The Rangers are terrible. We are 20, 12, and 3 right now, and I think we've just improved our defense pretty decently. Tavares is stepping on the pedal right now. He's going pedal to the metal, and he's really catching up with that point-per-game pace. Let's go to the defense, and let's throw Connor Carrick down onto the third pairing right now with Seidenberg and then we're going to get Dermot out the moment and our scratch is currently Travis Hamannick I think that's what we're going to go with and then oh, Hamannick might even be our top pairing guy how's Gardner doing right now not bad uh, he's doing okay but not well enough to save himself so defensive defenseman and Morgan Riley who is Pretty much an offensive defenseman. I'm fine with that. Gardner and Zaitsev is a better second pairing for sure. And then Carrick and Seidenberg. We've got righty-lefty combos going all over the shop here. I'm okay with that. And then we've got Dermot Scratched, who will definitely come in for some more games because he's not been awful and I don't want to ruin his development. So he's not forgotten about. I'm going to forget about him, but I won't forget about him. But I also, I might. Let's go two. Let's just go. I think I'm going to go all the way through to the deadline before I start worrying about the scouts and all that stuff. And I'm actually going to go straight away there now because I've just realized how far, how long this video is so far. And I'm basically not used to this game. And so it's going to take me longer to adjust. I was just getting to the point where I was able to climb that because we've got our man now, I think, to be honest. I was getting to the point where I can actually do an under 30 minute video on NHL 18 and then this new one's ruining everything. Ruining everything, but it seems pretty good so far, so I'm super okay with it. Cracknell's injured again, whatever. Let her, yeah, I'm going to the, uh, I'll go to the deadline, then I'll look at the, um, oh goodness me, don't, not if we keep losing though, I won't. Nashville, 20 and 20. How weird. Uh, Cracknell, please, you're killing me doesn't matter but you're making me 
make the change every time and I don't care about the AHL. Only reason that oh, flipping it, we're losing the games there. Didn't know he was injured, didn't tell me, so I'm not worried about him. Uh yeah, I'd really like it if we could stop losing games. There you go. We beat the Le uh, Leafs, the Bruins, and the Colorado Avalanche. We kind of bounce back a bit here. And the Tampa Bay Lightning have actually improved significantly. I don't want Lovejoy now. I think we're okay defensively. I think Hamannick is a good pickup. We can afford him next year. Horton's been injured with back spasms. Yeah, well, he probably shouldn't be playing anyway because he's, he's uh, injured. Reserve, whatever. Hickey, uh, no, not anymore. Not for a first anyway, you maniacs. Central Scouting has released their stuff. What do we know about these guys now? We only know the top four. And we don't even know the top four because he reckons this guy's going to be number six. Bowen Byram. He's doing okay. He's not that good. 29 points in the WHL as a fourth overall pick. That's a bit nuts. Oh, he's a defenseman. Hmm. Yep, I've been a bit harsh on him there. Actually, that's quite good. Uh, similar to Victor Hedman. Yeah, he's all right, isn't he? So... Yeah, I just not at first. We're not picking up this high. I very much doubt we're going to do any trades like that. We'd be more likely to go after a, a not even a top 10 guy. I think we're looking more realistically at mid to late 20s. Someone like Yarvanen could be really good. Or Ty David could be excellent. Decent stats this year in a low level league, but pro release, good. So he's quick. He's good, good senses, and he's got a good shot, basically. Friendly, but keeps himself to himself. Similar to Theo Fleury. Interesting. Okay. Kaliev, I think, is a top six guy, because I just watched Tugi's thing on it. Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, there's some options for us here if we wait until the late first. It's just making sure we find out what we're looking at. Stuart Wallace could be an option as well. I don't know what the height and everything means. It's really frustrating. I should know exactly what it means because I'm European. I, I just don't. Scribblings is a guy that we I definitely want to be looking at picking up, maybe. We did just give up our second round pick, which was now I'm thinking possibly not smart, but we can go after another one. I, again, I'm going to wait until the deadline to sort that out. Probably look off camera and sort that out so it doesn't take the whole video, and then I can recap what I'm doing. Uh, February 5th. Morgan Riley. That's pretty soon, right? Very soon. Yeah, I mean, he's going to miss three games, but I'm fine with Travis Dermott going onto that line for a bit. Kapanen, uh, no, I'm not giving up my second Dan Kapanen for stuff. Ooh, the second, no. I wouldn't take him for free. I don't want Andre Sekera. His contract's not good enough. Uh, Marcus Johansson and Ben Lovejoy for a first and a third. I think we're going to go ahead and decline that. Unless there's someone really good at the deadline available, I don't necessarily feel the need to go after anyone. I'm not going to put Horton back in. Because it does feel weird having him in when he's been a, uh, an injured reserve for about four years. Dmitro Timoshov has been injured with a concussion. Replace him. And Morgan Riley's fully healed. That isn't the 5th of February, is it? Is he coming early? Seidenberg is a 79, so I'm actually going to I don't know why it told me suddenly that he was better than he was. That's a bit weird. It may be on reputation. He's a minus two as well, so I don't feel the need to keep him in. Dermot can go back in for him. Okay, that's fine. And what do we do? I'm so confused. Why is it... That was just weirding me out. It just didn't show me what was going on. So I didn't have any idea what was going on. Yeah, this is weird. That was weird. Probably just a little bug. Oh, stop getting injured. All my Toronto Marlies players are getting injured. Nyquist for a first and Kapanen. Oh, Nyquist and a second for a first and Kapanen, though. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. 83 overall. I'm not going to decline, but realistically not going to improve. Well, he's not going to improve. And... Oh, he's got 51 points. I wouldn't be tempted if he wasn't killing the game. I might come to them and offer them a trade. I don't think it's going to be a first and Kapanen. 
but maybe we could do something with them at the time. Nyquist is someone I'll keep my eye on because he could be helpful for that third line, which is a lot to give up for a third liner though. So Del Zotto, a fourth and a fifth for two thirds. No, don't want to do that. We beat the Rangers 4-0. Oh, we're very shaky, very shaky. Timoshov, oh, I really can't be dealing with all these these changes in the AHL. I don't want to be doing these micromanaging things. I really want to get to the deadline for the next sake because this has been a long video already. Uh, Sim is starting to slow down. We're worse than Arizona right now, actually. Zook, uh, not for the first and the second right now, but I, I'd be tempted to look at Zook. Oh, we lose to the Coyotes. Oh, I don't want to do changes at the AHL. Brooksy, get out. Mueller, get in. It doesn't really matter. Grunstrom's grown a little bit. Come on. First and second. and No, not right now. Maybe at the deadline. Maybe. Come on. Come on, simulation. It's going to be another trade offer, isn't it? Come on. We've got 30 wins anyway. Uh, Johansson's been injured. Uh, Johnson, Johnson, sorry. Uh, this isn't coach replace him for now. That's not a hot major issue. He's on the fourth line right now. It'll just put Lievo back in. Sparks has been injured. Ugh. What do I think about that one? So we're at 32 wins now. Trade deadline's almost upon us. I'm aware. Yep, I'm very aware. Travis Hamannick's been injured. That's irritating, but again, we'll just replace him because it's only a few days. Kadri is fully healed. Don't remember him getting injured, but okay. Here we are at the deadline. We lost to the Sabres. Super annoying. We're in, we, I'm assuming we're like right on the bottom end of a playoff spot. We're not in a playoff spot right now. We're one point off the New Jersey Devils. I mean, surely this team is good enough for a playoff spot. I think I'm just going to end it there with that this current setup and go right what we're going to do at the deadline join me next time to find out and i will make sure that i sort all the scouting out because right now i think it's a bit of a mess as well so there you go that's going to be the end of this one i hope you enjoyed that thanks for watching